Hey guys, so uh, I want to do a quick overview of quantum physics in Unit 2 because when I've been talking to students, unit, in Unit 2, in their preparation, quantum is the thing that comes up time and time again as proving problematic. So this is going to be a very brief, very quick overview of the topic. And the way that I'm going to do that is sort of like look, look at the development of the idea of quantum physics extremely quickly and briefly uh, so hopefully this will be of some use right so the, the big ideas with wave theory versus particle theory are uh, well I think some of the key things that we're going to see as we look at these experiments and so on is wave theory tells you that uh, there is a, a continuous characteristic of the energy transfer in wave theory, okay, so it's continuous. You can have multiple values and energy is being transferred all of the time, and total energy transfer adds up over, accumulates over time. In particle theory, though, you have this discreteness that only certain amounts of energy are transferred, and certain in interactions or observations only occur if the amount of energy is just right, so it's discrete, it's set amount. That's where the idea of quantum comes from, quantum meaning a small amount of something, meaning in the context a small amount of energy. Okay, so that's, those are the two sort of main things that we can see. Now, if we go back in time, you've probably heard of this guy called Newton. Now, he's a bit, he's legendary when it comes to physics, so he's a big, um, big guy in physics. And uh, he thought of light as a particle, and he got he gave lots of proof of um, different light behaviours in terms of it being a particle. I mean, the guy had pretty much into, uh, invented mechanics, so of course, light should be these little particles that behave just as other particles do. In mechanics. So, uh, light is a particle. But then, uh, Young conducted his experiment, the two slit in the twins experiment, and that irrefutably proved that light was a wave, because how do particles interfere to give you this interference pattern on, on the screen that you will know of from the two source interference experiment? So, particles, they can't interfere, so therefore light is a wave. Okay, now let's fast forward again. Uh, that was fine for a while, but it hits now with a different experiment. So you see how Young conducted this experiment, overturned the ideas of light being a particle, light is therefore a wave. But there's another experiment, and that can't be explained by wave theory, the photoelectric effect. You should know that. If you don't know about the photoelectric, experiment, uh, photoelectric effect experiment, then uh, and that's the one using the electroscope. I've done a video of that, so that will come up. A link to that will come up now. So click on that if you need to know what that experiment is about. I am going to talk just briefly about that experiment, however. Uh, now, and so the photoelectric effect, wave theory couldn't explain this. What happens in the photoelectric effect is you have an electroscope. An electroscope is a way of measuring charge. And if you negatively charge your plate, the metal plate on the electroscope, zinc is a good metal to remember for this. So you have a negatively charged zinc plate. If you expose that to visible light, then the electroscope remains unchanged. The amount of charge on a plate does not change over time. And you can leave it there for a long time. Uh, however, if you use a new type of electromagnetic radiation, one with a higher frequency, ultraviolet, and expose the same plate, negatively charged, to ultraviolet radiation, then charge is removed from it. So, charge is being removed from this plate, but you have to increase the frequency of the radiation above what, what appears to be some kind of threshold frequency. There's a set level at which this happens. Um, 
and that happens with negative charge, not positive charge. So that indicates the fact that it's negative and not positive charge, that electrons are being removed from the plate. But you have to have um, extra electrons on the surface of the plate by negatively charging the plate. A neutral plate won't work because the radiation can't remove the atomic electrons, the ones that are actually part of the atoms of the metal. So uh, why is this a problem for wave theory, the photoelectric effect? Well, in wave theory, light is just, uh, sorry, energy is associated with intensity. And um, wave theory also says that you have a continuous transfer of energy. So if light were just behaving like a wave, then with visible light, you should eventually transfer enough energy to the metal plate to get electron emission. But that doesn't happen. You can leave your electroscope for a long time in the presence of visible light, and that won't change anything. The charge will remain. Um, you can also use a really, really bright visible light. So you can uh, have a really intense light, and if you remember, intensity tells you how much energy is being transferred per unit area, per unit time. So if it's really intense, it should be transferring even more energy, and yet still increasing the intensity does not affect the emission of electrons. And what I mean by that is it doesn't cause electron emission. Uh, so wave theory had this problem, it hit a snack. So um, Einstein and Bauer, they went back to the particle idea. They went back to considering light as a particle. Um, you should appreciate the fact that when we talk about light in this context, we're saying all electromagnetic radiation because they're all, they all have to have the same nature. So they're all uh, particles. Um, how does the particle theory explain this? Well, what it says is that the energy is actually arriving in small packets and light is related to, by the virtue that we're talking about light, the Greek word for light, photo. So we, they call them photons. Uh, energy is arriving in these little packets, or quanta, called photons. And their energy is related to frequency. So that would account for the idea of there being a threshold frequency. Um, now, when the photons arrive, only one photon can interact with one electron. So you have a one-to-one -one interaction. Each one photon will give its energy to one electron, and if that energy is sufficient to escape the metal, then it will escape. But if it's not sufficient, then it will not escape. So visible light, in the case of zinc, uh, does not, the photons of visible light do not have enough energy for the electrons on the zinc plate to escape the metal. So there's this interaction and the charge is not ultimately removed from the plate. But ultraviolet light does have um, photons which have energy above the work, what we call the work function. The work function is the amount of energy required to release an electron from the metal plate. So the ultraviolet does. So if you switch out your visible light for an ultraviolet light and expose the plate to ultraviolet light, then you will get electron emission. So that's how energy arrives in particle theory. And it's a one-to-one -one interaction between one photon and one electron. Okay, now I said, I clarified that point about intensity earlier, that uh, intensity doesn't affect whether electrons are emitted or not. However, it does have an effect if your photons that are arriving have enough energy. So in the case, in our case, we're using ultraviolet light. If I then have a low intensity ultraviolet light and a high intensity ultraviolet light, then intensity controls how much energy is, how much total energy is arriving per unit time at the plate. So with my low intensity ultraviolet light, there's a smaller amount of total energy. So fewer photons are arriving. However, the photons do have enough energy to release the electrons. So I will get a certain number of electrons being released per unit time. So I'll see my gold leaf or the rod on the electroscope 
starting to fall rather slowly. With my more intense ultraviolet light, more photons arrive at the plate with enough energy to release electrons. So I expose it to that and the leaf will fall faster because there's more electron emission. Okay, so that's the photoelectric effect. So where are we now? Well, we still have these two experiments which irrefutably prove that light is a wave and light is a particle. So what we say is that light or electromagnetic radiation has a dual nature, has a wave-particle duality. In some cases it seems to behave like a wave, in other cases it seems to behave like a particle. That's where we are at the moment. What other evidence is there that light can behave like a particle? Well, there is other evidence. And uh, now historically, scientists have been burning elements and seeing that you get these, you get different coloured light when you burn different elements. And uh, they also knew that if you looked through a spectroscope, which has got a diffraction grating in it, and um, it projects the, the light which has been put through the diffraction grating onto a screen that you can see in the spectroscope. When they were looking through it, they saw these discrete lines of colour. Okay, so now I haven't got all the different colours, so I'm just going to illustrate that by... If this is where a continuous visible spectrum would appear, then within that there were these certain wavelengths that were emitted. Okay. So it's something like that. You have these specific wavelengths, but no one can explain why that was. Around about the same time as um, the nature of light was being reassessed and scientists were starting uh, to think of light as behaving like a particle, Niles Boer started to interpret these emission spectra as partic particle behaviour of light. Um, so this is what's called an emission spectrum. And uh, what he said was that these were photon these were the result of photons being emitted by the atoms when they got energized. So uh, the atoms got energised and the electrons moved up energy levels and as they moved back down the energy levels, in order to conserve energy, the energy had to go somewhere, it was emitted in the form of a photon. So in the emission spectrum, uh, electrons within the atom move down an energy level and in order to conserve energy they emit a photon which has an energy equal to the difference in energy levels. So if we represent it like this, okay, this is where the electron normally is, the ground state. And um, when we're burning our element, then the electrons get get move, move up an energy level because they've absorbed some energy. And they're here, and then as they move down, they emit a photon. And if this is E2, E1, so the difference in energy there, delta E, and that is equal to the energy of the photon. Now, the key thing here is this is discrete behaviour, it's not continuous behaviour. This is, this is different to a continuous spectrum. So this is discrete behaviour, it's particle behaviour. So that's atomic energy levels. And they realised that the same thing happens in reverse as well. If you have white light that travels through a gas cloud, then uh, what you see is that you get a continuous spectrum, but wavelengths are missing. And that indicates the fact that specific photons have been absorbed by the atoms in the gas cloud. And so as that's happened, so this photon here, been absorbed and then that's causing an electron to move up an energy level. So the same process can happen in reverse as well. And I should also note that 
this behavior, it, you always get exactly the same wavelengths of light emitted or absorbed for the same element. So it's like a unique fingerprint for each element, which energy levels are available and therefore which transitions you can have between them. So energy levels that, and the emission spectra, that is further evidence of the particulate nature of light. Um, if you want to see the absorption and emission spectrum, then I did a video on that as well, so the link will come up for that, and you can actually see what the emission spectra look for look like for some elements. Okay, so that's the emission spectrum. Um, now that's electromagnetic radiation. So considering whether it's a light or a particle. So then we come to De Broglie. And uh, what he did was he said, well, electromagnetic radiation has this bizarre wave-particle duality. I wonder if some other things that we consider to be particles, and we have pretty good evidence for them being particles, I wonder if they also have this wave-particle duality. So he hypothesized that um, particles under the right conditions would have uh, would be able to behave like waves. So he said that the part, a particle may have a wavelength equal to Planck's constant divided by mv. Planck's constant coming from this equation here, the photon energy equation. Uh, and there is, there, to, lo and behold, it turns out, yes, they can. There's experimental evidence for this. So if you take a thin graphite foil and you shine a beam of x-rays through that, then you get a pattern like this. I say like this, it's not going to be exactly... Uh, exactly right. Yeah, something like that, okay? What that is, is a circular interference pattern, okay? So you've got this destructive and constructive interference just happening in two dimensions rather than the one dimension like the two source interference experiments. Okay? So that's what you get with x-rays and they have a wavelength of about 10 to the minus 10 meters. Now take the same foil and expose it to a beam of electrons moving at a particular velocity and or having, well, having a certain momentum to give them a wavelength of about 10 to the minus 10 meters, okay? And what do you get? Well, you get an interference pattern that looks pretty much exactly the same as that. Well, it does look exactly the same as that. And these are electrons. We think of them as particles, and yet they can interfere. So it seems that electrons also can have this wave-particle duality. Okay, and this is, remember, this is interference, this is not a particle behavior. How do two electrons destructively interfere to cancel each other out or um, constructively interfere for that? That's just weird. So there we have particle diffraction, okay? Um, further evidence for this, the, the idea of a wave-particle duality. And that is a very brief run-through of um, quantum physics for G482. I do apologise if there were a couple of interruptions whilst I was filming this, so I had to, I will have to do some editing to um, block that out and piece this together. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. Uh, if you need any further help, then get me on Twitter or write in the comments. And all the best for your exams on Monday. <laughs>